Okay, so embossing. It's the art of making a flat sheet of metal like this. It's just an offcut of copper pipe that I've flattened into something that looks really, really cool. And uh, it's not the most sciencey thing, but it's a really interesting method. And proper people will have huge amounts of tools and have spent their entire life mastering the craft. I recommend you check out the YouTube channel Man at Arms for some absolutely brilliant demonstrations of this. Um, Ilya is just brilliant. I basically stole all my ideas, but I've worked out a much easier method for anyone who wants to try this with them uh, less than 2,000 years of experience and a tool set that's over 2,000 specialist tools. So all you're going to need is an old screwdriver. I've got a short one here. A sort of flat ended piece of metal. You could use the under end of one of the screwdrivers, but I've just got a temp peg with a filed round end. And maybe just something with a sort of smaller point. Uh, not sure what this was, it was from the same set. And I've got a slightly more blunt version of that for if I don't want as much detail. Also got some blue tack, of course the cold plate, a nice permanent marker, and a hammer. So, without further ado, Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to transfer and draw your detail on. You want to pick the side of the copper that you think looks better. I'm going to pick this side. And you just want to draw out your detail onto the copper. Okay, so now I've got a simple version of my design transferred on. I'm doing a dragon. I recommend if you're trying this for the first time, uh, don't do something this difficult. Do something like your initials or something fairly similar because it does take a while to get used to. I have I haven't done this for two million years but this is sort of I think my third or fourth one that I've done of this. So it doesn't take too long to get good at this but I would definitely not recommend something this ambitious for your first try. So what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to get my sort of wide screwdriver and I'm just going to go around the outside and sort of put a line into it. I've put blue tack underneath the sheet just basically so that it can bend it a lot more easily and it also risk, reduces the risk of it uh, breaking. So you just want to go around your outline lines that you've drawn in and just sort of get a rough idea of what you're doing. Okay, so I've just finished doing all my outlines, and it's a bit bent out of shape, but that's nothing to worry about. This can always be straightened in the next step, and you should have a sort of faint image on the other side of what you want to do. What we want to do now is you want to get your flat-headed one, and you want to, as good as you can, sort of gently tap it over the top, and just straighten it back out. Don't hit it very hard, because that will, of course, damage your lines. But sort of just get and on the inside of your design, if you want to raise it, hit it with the flat-headed bit to drive it back out. And of course on the outside, near where your lines are as well. Just sort of flatten it down. And just make sure that everything's nice and out. Of course, make sure to flip it over and work out what you're doing. So I've got a little line around there. This line here, push that out mostly. Okay, so you just want to carry on like this, and I'll cut back once I've done that. Okay, so after you're first raising it, it should look a bit like this, and you can already see that we're starting to get a little bit of depth in it. It's still very crude, but we're starting to get the main shape and the depth. So what you want to do now is you want to get your blue tech back, of course. You want to get your thing again, and all of the main outside lines around the side along with any slightly smaller bits of detail like any sort of, on my dragon of course I've got slight 
horns and you want to start adding in the slightly smaller detail in this run and just go around everything again hammering it in of course if it's something you want to bring out of course do the same thing just go on the other side say this is the horn I want to bring out hit it from this side knock it through And then as you can see, I've got a nice raised area. And once you've got the raised area, come in from the other side. And on either side, just go around the outside of it, taking the metal back down. And that's really all there is to it. You just want to continue doing this sort of stuff for ages and ages and ages until it's starting to look fairly nice and finished. Okay, so after a bit of work you've got something that looks a lot like this. I've got quite a lot of the detail done in now and now I'm just going to talk through how to do some of the more um, complicated steps. So for things like the snout, if you want a nose and you want it slightly more angled at the back than it is at the front, what you want to do is you want to take your thing, you want to do it one way and slightly alter the angle and then you want to keep turning it back and forth whilst you're hammering it you should get something like that if you've got really thin areas just go through one of the defining tools well I'll call it defining tool it's actually just a screwdriver as I've said and just very lightly tap around that area be careful not to hit too hard otherwise you'll get a definite line which of course on raising is not what you want to do sort of of course hit again if you want to define one area, put the thing on one side a bit and definitely at an angle as you're doing something and it'll define that end of the indentation a little more. And the next difficult bit that I've got to do is where the lower area of the jaw meets the main cheek. So the lower area of the jaw is meant to be above the cheek. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to hit on a very hard angle into that line and drive the cheek down and in. At the same time, I'm going to get the part that's the cheek. I'm going to hit it from the other side at a strong angle and try and drive it up and out. So effectively do the same thing, only one way from one side and the other way from the other side to try and create a very definite sort of ridge. So this will probably take a while. And if it is getting a little too high on that side, you can just tap it a little with the flatter to get it down. And then continue on driving it. You really want to create a fold where one part of the metal goes underneath the other, but that is quite hard to do. So you really want to just make sure that the angle is very steep when you're doing stuff like this and working with it. So I will cut back once I've done this enough times for it to look really Okay, cool. so after oh so much hammering, I've done the same thing around the jawline, I've done the area over the eye, and I've done all the areas around the back. So it's starting to look pretty good. Now comes one of the really, really annoying hard parts which is doing an eye on anything. So what you want to do is you want to work out where your eye is going to be, flip it over to the other side, and I haven't got something the right size to do the eye. So I'm going to have to very carefully use this little one, sort of punch through where the eye is going to be. Being very careful not to make it too definite. So it's brought out a little bit. Just going to get the area around the outside and very slowly bring it back down again. Good thing about this is the small indent in the middle it forms is very good to make the pupil of the eye so you don't need to worry about that. But you need to be careful to really hit softly here otherwise you can knock through the entire thing 
and ruin everything, which after this much work would be really, really very annoying. I do not want to start again. If you want to have it looking somewhere, of course, you can angle the hits so that the eye is in a particular location, facing in a particular direction. But it's not going to make a huge difference either way, so it's not something to worry about hugely. But yep, so after that amount of work, we've made the small eye on the piece. And it's now pretty much done as an embossing. You've got your nice detailed image on it. So what you really want to do now is you just want to sort of, if there are any lines that are undefined, just want to get your big things and put them back in. And just keep working on them. So I'll cut back once I've just cleaned up my final lines and got it ready. Okay, so I just went through and did up all my lines. I added in the mouth because I realised I'd forgotten that. <laughs> sort of at the last moment. And I just went over with some steel wool and just brightened it all up. So I think it looks quite good. I hope this video has been helpful if you want to do this sort of thing. And I'll see you next Monday.